So welcome to the ultimate camera comparison between the three generations of iPhone 12 Pro, 13 Pro and 14 Pro. Without further ado, let's begin. Ok, so starting with the first picture, I try to focus on the sub light. As the result, the iPhone 14 Pro managed to do it best, I think. Apart from that, the rest of the scene was captured in a very similar manner on every generation. Moving to the first ultra-wide angle shot, I can spot a slight difference in exposure. Again, the 14 Pro wins even if not by much, providing overall the most balanced out result. The 12 Pro is very close, but keep in mind with more exposure, the noise will increase. That is the case you will notice by looking very closely. The 13 Pro is just a bit too dark here for me. The mention difference is rather negligible in the wide angle mode now. Almost the same processing algorithms it seems. So most of the time the overall color science and HDR are very solid, although again rather undistinguishable, both in the ultra wide angle and standard wide angle mode. But indeed on rare occasions you will encounter that bit brighter, more exposed result from the 12 Pro and a tad darker coming from the 13 Pro. Though like I've said most of the time they are practically the same. But I can accept that because throughout those years truthfully Apple seemed to tune this color science and HDR to be in fact really pleasing. Looking at the telephoto abilities you will find 2 times native zoom on the 12 Pro and 3 times on the 13 Pro. What's interesting is that the newest generation is actually equipped with both of those options. So there you go, 2 times zoom on the iPhone 14 Pro. Importantly it is still native because it actually uses some of the pixels from the larger resolution main sensor. And on top of that you still have 3 times telephoto module to use, just like in the iPhone 13 Pro. The quality seems in the end comparable. But I was curious to put this very new type of 2 times zoom against the dedicated iPhone 12 Pro telephoto. And going into the magnification, it reveals no downgrade in the image quality whatsoever. The 14 Pro actually performs even better I think. However, one thing I personally consider as a serious step backwards from the iPhone 12 Pro is the bigger focusing distance of the main lens on two other iPhones. To compensate, the camera in the 13 and 14 Pro automatically switches to the ultra-wide angle module to capture macro. That way, the focusing distance is in fact even shorter, but please remember the quality gets worse and is nothing like from the main lens. Just look at the bokeh alone, you won't get those dramatic results anymore, so for me it's a clear win for the 12 Pro in this regard. This year Apple made some big claims about the increase in the sensor size, so I'm hoping to see at least some difference in the level of detail. Moving to the first close-up, notice a more shallow depth of field coming from the 13. Faster aperture and 14, bigger sensor. The colors on both are the same, that is slightly warmer than in the 12 Pro. Getting into the crop, I am however not able to say there is any difference in the level of detail. Now let's zoom in on the statue, finally the 14 Pro appears to be a bit sharper, but is it only the sharpening or the amount of detail per se is really that superior? Cropping onto this BMW wheel, again, is it just me or the level of detail stay more or less the same? Anyway, final verification, this lock. My favorite subject to test how a given camera reproduces textures and nuances. And I guess we have one more proof that this new amazing sensor was probably a bit exaggerated at the Apple conference. Show time. Show time. Show time. Briefly commenting on the video quality differences, the 13 and 14 Pro are very close and I think noticeably improved compared to the 12 Pro. Even though at first glance all of them look similar, if you look closely it somewhat feels like the bitrate is higher on older models, because the footage is most often sharper when you pause the video for example. 
Also, the stabilization is better without those annoying exposure jumps found on the 12 Pro. Especially the newest iPhone appears to really exceed at that, with improved stabilization features that you can turn on in the settings. By the way, video quality wise, I made a separate comparison so you can fully evaluate the maxed out format HAVC 4K in Dolby Vision HDR both in daylight and at night. When you switch to the ultra-wide angle mode, you will appreciate even bigger difference in details and sharpness on both mentioned models in comparison with the 12 Pro. I'm happy to see that because videography abilities in the ultra-wide angle mode are sadly often overlooked. Dimming the lights a bit, in this scene the 13 Pro actually came out the darkest. Although the difference between all of them may not be groundbreaking, to be expected the 14 Pro's picture is probably the most appealing. When it comes to the 12 Pro the level of noise and artifacts are a bit concerning. In the ultra wide angle mode looks like the 13 and 14 Pro were both sharper and brighter, with the 14 Pro having some edge over the older models. Switching to the standard wide angle, very solid results on all of them and overall I still cannot believe how close they are. But to be fair, looking closely, the 14 Pro is the brightest and sharpest one. But I'm thinking, if somebody were to ask me which phone is the best bang for a buck, I probably had no other option to say than the 12 Pro. Don't get me wrong, I love the results, but at the same time I'm slightly disappointed with the 14 Pro. Hearing all of those claims about this so new large sensor, I expected a bit more improvements, especially in regards to the night mode and overall level of detail. Still, it is a small step in a good direction. All in all, I think I would be fine with the 12 Pro, it is in the end the most affordable, thinnest and lightest. Additionally, I prefer its macro capabilities, pretty much my only concern would be the video quality, because this is probably where the biggest difference between the oldest phone and the 13 and 14 Pro is. Maybe the 13 Pro would probably be in a sweet spot, because I think it provides 95% of the 14 Pro camera abilities. So the question remains when I will run to distance from the hype about changes in camera sensor. But really, let me know what do you think about the differences between all of them. Thank you very much for watching and consider subscribing for coming trustworthy camera comparisons and reviews. See you in the next one. Peace.